Welcome to another episode of the Armourer's Bench. Today, we're lucky enough to be examining a somewhat mysterious screw breech percussion rifle. If you, like me, have ever wondered what a Ferguson rifle with a percussion lock might look like, then you'll find this rifle fascinating. If you haven't seen our earlier video on Patrick Ferguson's 18th century breech loading rifle, then please do check that out at the link above. This rifle likely dates to the mid-1860s and is believed to be based on a design patented by Lewis Wells Broadwell, an American inventor. Broadwell was granted his first patent in 1861, protecting a sliding breech design for artillery. During the 1860s and 70s, Broadwell was employed as the European sales agent for the Gatling Gun Company. He held a number of firearms and ordnance related patents granted between 1861 and 1876, with several relating to artillery carriages, ammunition, and magazine systems. His screw breech and his gas check designs for artillery were used by Krupp in some of their guns, including the popular 68mm breech loading mountain gun. Like the earlier Ferguson rifle, which drew heavily on earlier screw breech designs, this rifle has a rotating trigger guard, which acts as a lever to unscrew the breech. Rotating the trigger guard drops the rectangular breech block and opens the action. Unlike the Ferguson, the threaded piece does not act as the breech plug itself. Instead, the separate breech block takes the brunt of the cartridge's ignition. Broadwell filed the patent believed to correspond to this rifle, first in Britain in May 1863, and subsequently in the US in August 1865. The pattern protected the breech action and depicts what Broadwell describes as a screwed nut below a rectangular vertically sliding breech block. This idea of a sliding breech block builds on his earlier patent for a sliding cannon breech. In Britain, Broadwell used Richard Bruman of Robertson, Bruman and Company as a patent agent. At the time, Bruman's company offered a service by which he acted as the inventor's deputy and was listed as the patent holder, while the inventor was listed as the communicator. The service itself cost the not insignificant sum of £45. At the time, the average labourer could expect to earn just three shillings and nine pence per week, or about 15% of a pound. So £45 represents just under a year's average wages. This initial sum covered the patent for three years. It's likely that Broadwell employed an agent because at the time he was living in St. Petersburg in Russia, undertaking negotiations with the Russian government to establish Gatling gun production. Bruman was also the editor of the Mechanics magazine, a Victorian science and industry journal in Britain. The breech plug has a screw thread with a very wide pitch with flat crests. Broadwell's US patent describes the breech plug as having a three to six threaded screw. The breech block falls enough to allow loading after turning the lever approximately 200 degrees, ensuring a pretty rapid action. This rifle itself has no markings whatsoever, not even range markings on the rear sight. Typically, rifles of this period would have at least a maker's or patent holder's mark on the barrel or lock plate. This suggests that the rifle is either unfinished or more likely a prototype which did not require extensive markings. The breech block isn't blued and is possibly case hardened. Much like the Ferguson and other earlier screw breech rifles, the trigger guard also acts as the breech lever. As mentioned earlier, with a rotation of approximately 200 degrees, the breech block descends enough to open the breech and allow access to the chamber. The threaded screw is around half an inch or 1.2 centimeters thick and acts on the rectangular breech block which sits above it. The basic layout of the rifle matches Broadwell's UK and US pants. The rectangular shape of the breech block ensures a strong action, as it butts up against a pair of narrow shoulders, about 1mm in width, at the rear of the receiver. The rifle has a two-band stock and a ramrod slash cleaning rod which indicates a military style rifle. The rifle is believed to be chambered in a cartridge using a 451 Wesley Richards projectile. There is no method of extraction, so we can safely assume that the rifle used a combustible cartridge, ignited by a percussion cap, rather than a self-contained metallic cartridge. Interestingly, the UK patent also suggests the use of a tubular magazine formed in the hammer, containing self-acting feeding apparatus 
for supplying ignition wafers or patches to the nipple, a system along the lines of the Maynard tape primer or other similar systems. This isn't mentioned in the later US patent, and the rifle we're examining here has a conventionally capped percussion lock. The US patent also describes a mechanism to prevent the gun from being fired when the breech is open. This is formed by a lever which disengages the trigger when the breech lever is rotated. There is a small leather flange at the base of the stock where the screw ascends and descends. This prevents the ingress of dirt and also acts to keep the screw clean. Compared to Patrick Ferguson's action, Broadwell's design simplifies the breech plug using a simpler to manufacture rectangular breech block and a thinner screw plug. The use of a self-contained cartridge would have sped up loading, but the need to cap the rifle was still a limiting factor. The screw breech concept became increasingly obsolete with the introduction of self-contained metallic cartridges with integral primers, as well as the introduction of faster actions including bolt actions, falling block actions, and toggle-locked lever actions. Lewis Broadwell was born in Cincinnati in Ohio on the 18th of July, 1820. He's perhaps best known for his drum magazine design for the Gatling gun. The Broadwell drum consisted of a series of single-stack gravity-assisted magazine columns, arrayed around a central pivot point. These columns held between 15 and 20 rounds, depending on calibre, and there were typically 16 columns of ammunition. Broadwell patented the drum's design in December 1870. It was used extensively around the world by a number of militaries, including the British Army. Broadwell was granted his last patent in 1876, and died in May 1906, aged 86. Special thanks to the Hayes Collection for letting us take a look at this very interesting rifle. Thanks to David at the Research Press for help finding Broadwell's UK patent, and to John Walter for his help finding information on Broadwell himself. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.